turn to Allah, read your five salah a day, a Muslim, and he does not read five salah? Allahu Akbar. How can that be, my brothers and sisters? If you have read one in the past and now you are reading two, it's a very big improvement. But that is not still the ideal. You need to continue because as Muslimin, we have khamsa salawatin fi kulli yawmin wa layla. If you look at the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal, radiyallahu anhu, when he was sent to Yemen, he was told to teach the people several items from amongst them. One of them was tell them they owe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala five daily prayers, not two, not three. You know, we word it differently. When we speak to the younger people, sometimes we tell them, you know, you need a key to enter. For example, let's say paradise. You want to enter paradise, you need a key. You want to enter this door, you need a key. Each key has a number of teeth. Just like if I want to phone you, I need your phone number. Brother, if I have one error in the whole phone number, I won't get through to you. You see? So if I would like paradise, I need to read five salah on a daily basis. That is the figure. That's the number of teeth on the key. If you have one tooth missing, what happens? Try it. Take your key and break out one tooth. Put it in. It won't open your door. But there are so many other teeth. One is missing. My brothers and sisters, against your laziness or mine, against the coziness of your bed, against whatever you are doing in the mall or at your workplace or enjoying with your family, stop everything at the time of salah and quickly fulfill your salah. Imagine I am saying quickly, whereas by right it's not supposed to be done quickly. But even if you have done it in the midst of your work and you have fulfilled that salah, come what may, wallahi that may just be the means of your entry into paradise. Some of us are not submitters. You know, we follow Islam where it, where it is easy for us only. Well, we need to do better than that. Which means, where it is easy, Alhamdulillah. Where it is difficult, we still want to try and we still want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The other day, I got a beautiful message on my phone. I need to share it with you. It showed a little caricature lifting weights. You know, weights which have heavy weights. I think maybe 60, 70 kilos on either side. And he's lifting weights. He says, you think you're strong? You see, the, the question is, you think you are powerful? Obviously, this is because the young people of today, they want to have big muscles, you know, and they want to be show, seen and they want to be felt. When they greet you, you just got to say, wa alaykum as salam, you know, because you cannot look at them anymore in the way that we used to in the past. No, big man, you got to look at him carefully. So it says, if you think you're very strong, you, you can lift Lift your blanket for Salatul Fajr, then you will be strong. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. You are strong, you want to lift? Lift your blanket at Salatul Fajr. That is the heavyweight title. Allahu Akbar. Brothers and sisters, I thought it was a very good message. Because today, the message of the deen needs to be put forth to our children and ourselves in a way that we look at it and we really think, Wallahi, it is correct. The powerful person is, the not, is not the one who can lift 120 kilos with one hand and with his little finger. Subhanallah, no, it isn't. A powerful person is the one who can lift his blanket up for Salatul Fajr and for Tahajjud. Allahu Akbar. In Surah Sajda, Allah says, speaks about these powerful believers and Allah says they are the ones whose sides refuse to actually lay down on those beds they move themselves off the bed the beddings in order to stand up in prayer for the Almighty at night praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fearing him and having hope in his mercy may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant that to us